Hello and welcome, it's Francis here. Thank you for coming back to my channel. If this is your first time here, I bid thee welcome. There is a subscribe button and a bell below if you want to be notified as to when I upload more content. And also if you want to support my channel, which will be most appreciated. I'm coming to you from Ghana country. As such, I acknowledge the Ghana people of the Adelaide Plains as being the traditional custodians of this land. So... I just want to talk very briefly. Um, you know, I've just got the sprinkler on outside because it's been hot the last few days, even though we've had a storm. And my garden's just dry as a bone. So that's what that noise is if you hear. Anyhow, I just want to respond to someone who contacted me privately and basically criticised that I didn't have any up-to-date photos of my altar, therefore I cannot be out practicing which. Yeah, so I am a little bit old school when it comes to photos of my workings. In that, how I was taught is that your altar is actually of your focus of power of energy especially when you're doing spell workings and even when it comes to devotional workings um, a good example of that is I've been trying very hard to do a video in front of one of my devotional altars and it's just not working obviously she doesn't want that altar to be made public which is fine but when I'm actually doing work, as in magical work, as in ritual, um, I'm actually focusing on the task at hand. In the past, when I have done Sabbath rites and other devotional workings, there may be photos of an altar pre-ritual or post-ritual, but usually there's been items excluded from those photos especially when the photos are made for general consumption so to speak that is because people do not need to know this is the whole thing we are in such of a FOMO society a fear of missing out that there is now this expectation that everything has to be made public and when it comes to the craft especially traditional, contemporary, hereditary, initiatory, whatever you want to call witchcraft um, and even traditional wicker, whatever the different labels are people identify with, you will really find photos of altars. And if you see any altars, these are usually staged. And in particular, Alexander's was a great one of doing that. The photos that you see of his altars aren't actually the true altars. There's usually things out of place, missing um, on purpose because people do not need to know. If you are an initiate, you will know. End of story. If you're not an initiate, none of your business. And yes, this has been earmarked as being exclusive or closed gate and that's how it is. Some things are not made for general public information. And I've gone on this before, giving the Wiccan read. There's a really good example of how it's been misinterpreted, misframed to the stage extent these days that it is interpreted as something that it's really not or never was meant to be. Anyway, I'm jumping down rabbit holes and I didn't really want to do that. So, I don't think I've covered this in the video when I've actually called, talked about altars. I know I've done circle casting and I've lost my piece of paper with all the old works for videos I was going to do. So, your altar, regardless of whether you're an operative witch, crystal collector, traditional, contemporary, whatever, your altar is your container or your seat of power your energy your focus or it could just be a nice display even if it is like an ancestral altar it's a collection 
of things that are important to you, that hold meaning to you, and therefore that in itself generates energy. Within contemporary witchcraft, or if you are religious in any way, shape or form, in that you believe in the other, you believe that there are supernatural beings, however they're interpreted, beyond ourselves, even if you refer to them as spirits or ancestors, still makes you religious or worshipping to a certain degree, then your altar space is where you do this exchange of energy, especially when it comes to ancestor work. Because you are presenting them with candles and water and liquids and food and offerings in order to get something back from them. So it's an energy exchange. The same thing in a devotional altar to a god or goddess. We do offerings, we make libations, we present things to them so that we can receive back and even if that boon that we receive back is just enhancing that belief that comfort knowing that they exist um we're not expecting them to so untitled uh, wealth upon us like the cross lotto numbers or something like that that would be good though but it's a two-way street in that we are exchanging energy. If you don't use your altar like that, well then you'll probably use it as a working station for your spell work. Again, this is where you sort of focus your energy on when you're mixing your herbs and gathering your crystals and working out your correspondences, um, even charging your botanicals. If people still do that these days, I don't know what they do with their spell work. It's also a focal point where you place your desires, your wishes, even if you're into the manifestations of the moon, you use it as your focal point. And so magic is energy. And I've mentioned this before. So you are using your energy, your focus, your intent, your witch power to create your magic. Therefore, your magic is its link. It's the link between the results of what you're wanting to achieve and also what you're putting your energy into, whether it's just simply lighting a candle or making a green group bag or a poppet or whatever. It's that energy between you and the thing even if it's meditation, is the link. Coming back with all of that to something that I have talked about before, I'm quite sure I have, the four powers of the Sphinx, which is the basic of occult teachings, or it was, uh, what people do these days, occult teachings, I have no idea, but will to know to dare to keep silent so when you take a photo when you share something of your magical workings especially if that working has not yet come to fruition and you see that all the time here's two candles and a piece of string what does this candle flame doing what does all this mean and it's meaning that you've taken a photo of your magical work and shared it to i don't know how, how many hundreds thousands of people and in doing that every single person is actually withdrawing your energy from your spell working have you thought about that drawing it diluting it you have dispensed it willingly so I sometimes wonder what success rate people have when they do that sort of work. I have seen in Facebook groups of repeat, I call them repeat offenders, not meaning to be nasty or anything, but people who probably once or twice a month or once every two months will post pictures of the same or very similar magical working, clearly because the first one has not worked. Why? 
because in posting the photos, they are dispersing the energy everywhere, including the intent, and therefore diluting their own power. And it also highlights the fact that they're not 100% sure or believe in their own magical ability if you're having to ask advice of other people. What does I don't know, one candle burning faster than the other candle mean. Not everything has a metaphysical, magical reasoning. It could be there's a draft. It could be the way the candles were made. It could be that one person who's represented by a particular candle is absorbing that power. Maybe that's your spell that you need to sit there and meditate on. People don't seem to be wanting to do any of their own work, their own exploration, their own self-discovery, to gain their own knowledge into their own working. They're just wanting to ask the social media collective of experts, and I'll say that without trying not to laugh too much, um, as to their opinions. And not everybody will know what you are actually doing or your intent or even be in the right energetic place to advise you. I know, never rabbit hole that I'm delving straight down. So if you don't know what you're doing, do your own research. How do you do that? Don't post pictures of your altar and spell workings on social media. Meditate. If you don't have access to books or reliable resources, a teacher, meditate. Only you, at the end of the day, only you know what working you are wanting to do. Yes, books, social plug, may have correspondence lists, but at the end of the day, that is based on that person, on that author's interpretation. And you can see that with the great compendiums that we have. There's so many different books on correspondence tables. Um, and there seems to be a single correspondence for every day of the week, every God, Goddess, every purpose. But a lot of it comes down to what works for you. Yes, some of them come from ancient grimoires, especially when you come down to days of the week and the basic correspondences but not everything fits into those categories especially in this day and age where we've got so much access to information more access than the writers of those grimoires had and then here's a thought how do you think those writers of those grimoires got that their information back in the i don't know 12th 14th 15th 11th 10th centuries did they were just bestowed upon them or do you think they actually work something else out for themselves I think we are getting I do say lazy but in this reliance this dependence on everybody else to do the work for us it actually dumbs us down and we see that in so many other circles and it also weakens our ability, our own belief, and our own power. And if that is the end result, well then it questions why do it in the first place. If you do not believe in your ability, if you need benchmarks and approval or recommendations or advice constantly from external sources. Maybe magic isn't quite the thing for you at this present point of time. And again, people don't like hearing that. But here's another question. Each time you ask a question, especially in relation to a spell that you have performed on social media, you are giving away your own power. How do you feel about that? Readily, easily giving away essences, aspects of yourself to complete strangers under this belief 
that everybody's gonna be helpful. This is the real world talking. So if you wanna take photos, look at me, I'm a witch, here's my altar. Think about who could see those photos. Think about why you're wanting to expose parts of your soul, and that's what it actually is. Creating an altar is a very personal thing, even within, say, a coven. It's a connection to your inner layers, and we call the inner spheres, your inner workings, to other people, especially if you're of a tradition, it connects you into the core of everybody else. If you're solitary, it offers up an insight as to what you are on another plane. Not this physical plane that everybody can see, but on a different, more energetic, more astral level, sort of, yeah, as well. And the whole realm of magic is that not everybody's love and light. No. And we see that even in the spiritual community. Yeah, I, there's certain areas where I'm just gobsmacked of how vicious, alleged, spiritual, love and light brigade people are. But hey, some people might say the same thing about me, but I've never pretended to be love and light. I work in all shades of grey. So, if you want to post photos of your older, go ahead and knock yourself out. I really don't care. But I don't think it's right for you to criticize other people who don't want to share it's a very personal thing anyway i'm offing now it's gone 17 minutes i don't know if this has been of any interest to you but um yeah if you want to post photos and i know things like social um instagram everybody likes to look at we could turn to four years show ponies in four years and it's also stripping back levels of confidence here. We see these pictures or images of perfect, I'm thinking, the perfect Yogini is doing the perfect pose. And I'm going, I can never do that. But it's all a facade. It's all a facade. I know I can never do a proper bow. I'm not built, even when I was younger and thinner. My body shape is not that where I can do a proper bow pose. Um, even sun salutation, my, my whole body, how it's built, I can never step forward into a lunge from downward dog. And it wasn't until I actually learnt my level one yoga teaching that I was told why I could never do that. And it wasn't because I was not agile enough. It simply was because of the length of my legs in relation to the length of my arms. Simple. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm just trying to think, why the hell am I going on about that? Because everything that you see on social media, well, not everything, a lot, is a facade. It's an image. It's a falsity. And if that's the world you want to live in, knock yourself out. I don't post pictures of my altar, especially my working altars, because it's a container for my magic. After I've received the desired goal, I may do a part photo or a set up photo for demonstrational purposes, but it's never my proper and true working altar because that is my container for my magic. Classic.